Hey y'all, my name is Tania. I'm a life coach. I'm a motivational speaker. Um, I'm an author. I'm a mother. I'm an entrepreneur. And I just want to just welcome you to my channel. Um, if you aren't subscribed, subscribe now because I am on a journey right now telling my story about, you know, what I'm going through, me healing, and just like whatever God wants me to speak about. But in this moment, in this present moment, I am going through dealing with a narcissist and the Lord just told me to speak because I am spreading awareness and it is good to, you know, go along with me with my journey because I may be helping you and we could all help each other while we're dealing with this. So the first thing first, what I want to talk about is how my narcissist, him having a criminal record, had a big deal with him being a narcissist. Um, it really had an effect on me and him. You know, he will always bring up him going to jail, him being in prison, him being on the foyer. And, you know, um, ain't nobody went through what he went through. He's really tough. He's really strong. And that's fine. That's fine. But obviously, in some area, you were weak because you put your hands on a woman. You know, being weak is when you just give up and you just have no control. Like, that's what being weak is. You know, you not knowing when to stop um you allowing yourself to do things that you know you're not supposed to do and so to me i felt like because he was always in his feelings and he would think back to him being in jail and always bring it up whenever we're arguing or whenever we're fighting and he put his hands on me i feel like is that the problem like him being in jail like i realized he was very institutionalized a lot of things that he did you know he would like take showers with his underwear on still he would be he would act like he was in jail and I used to be like you know I've been in jail too for a year you know it wasn't a violent crime but I was in jail for a year for money situations and like I realized that it could either make you or break you in jail I felt some type of ways too you know I got out kind of looking at people like oh you wasn't there for me but I had to realize too like they didn't make that decision to go to jail so like they didn't have to ride it out with me because they it wasn't their fault that I was in jail you know so I couldn't really have that in you know um make people feel bad for me going to jail i couldn't have that in my mind and so entitlement and so by him having entitlement feeling like because he went to jail he can do this that and the third i don't even understand it like and then one time like we were talking and we were listening to music and he was just like oh um this remind me of um a girl i used to mess with she left me while I was in jail. And I was like, oh, yeah. He was like, yeah, um, that B-I-T-C-H had me in jail because she said that I threatened to kill her. So that was like an eye-opener to me. Like, God, what are you revealing to me right now? That he did this already to somebody and he ain't learned this lesson because he's putting his hands on another woman, which is me. So I was like, dang, this is crazy. He even did time for it. So I was like, how, how long did you do? He was like, I did a year. And I'm like, in my mind, like, and you still didn't learn? I'm like, oh, so what did that teach you? He was like, uh, to not trust B-I-T-C-H's, right? So I just looked at him like, whatever. And mind you, we had just gotten to an argument. And so he was reflecting. Like, every time we argue, he would reflect on jail. He would reflect on his homies that ain't his homies. And I just felt like he felt betrayed in so many areas. And he would take it out on me. And I'm like, by him having a criminal record, you would think he would be afraid to do something because he don't want to go back to jail. No, he does not care. That's the problem. He got that criminal mind frame, you know. People go to jail and they do all this time and some of them get out and never go back or it takes them a long time to go back or they don't do the same thing at all. He continues to do the same thing over and over. He has dodged a bullet so many times. Even when um, we first got with each other or whatever, right, we used to get pulled over a lot. And I, I felt like God was like, you know, telling me something. We would get pulled over because it's tags. We would get pulled over because he want to go to certain... Um, places where it was drug dealers and they mistaken him for a drug dealer and i'll be like where are we at oh you know i'm meeting up with the homie why do you got me in this type of neighborhood first of all and then two what do you and the homie got to talk about like i don't have to be here like here we are on a date or whatever or just riding around or doing whatever and then you just go pull up on the homie and we get pulled over and then as soon as the police leave you pull right back up to that same spot you don't say okay i need to leave like institutionalized like that's crazy and even when we got pulled over um he would be like oh say you my baby mama i would be lying talking about oh yeah i'm his baby mama you know how these guys do oh act like we hugging act like we kiss right and that's back in the day stuff for me like i've been through so much right so i'm like okay whatever and i'll go along with it not knowing that i was manifesting to be his baby mama and look and so i was just like what the heck am i doing like this is so stupid you know like 
I'm smarter than this. But because he would come with these stories and um, they call it love bombing. Like, it's not like I was dumb. It was because I have a heart. So, like, if you say, not anymore, though, because I don't even play no games. I'm sorry. But back at that time a few years ago, if you would have said something to, you know, make my heart feel like, oh, or something sweet to me because I was just so jacked up. Um, if you would have said something like that, I would have just been going along with the okie doke. And I felt like he took advantage of me because of my situation. And I will talk about my situation I was going through. I had got out of a situation with a rapper and like I was so vulnerable. And what the rapper had did to me, you know, I just was like so accepting because I knew, I don't know, I, I needed, I needed something, but I know I didn't need this. And he know I didn't need this too, but he did it. He took advantage. Narcissist. So, this criminal record that he had, um, I realized that he will also talk about, you know, him being in jail and him not having his mother. So, he lost his mother at a young age, at 11. Or, no, not, not even at 11. His mom got sick at 11. And so, he had to take care of her. And when he ended up losing his mother, you know, he will always say, I don't have my mother. I don't have my dad because his dad died when he was very young, like little, little, little baby. And so um, he would just be like, you know, I'm just by myself with this and I don't have nobody. And he was like, and too, my mom was the only one who said that I didn't do no wrong. So that's another thing. His mother, you know, not to talk about his mother, but she, you know, she in her eyes, he didn't do no wrong. And he even admitted it. He was like, you know, my mom used to let me get away with a lot of stuff because my dad wasn't around and she was so in love with my dad too. And I remind her of my dad. And so, you know, and I took care of her too. So like I could do whatever basically. Like, so his mom didn't even tell him what was right and what was wrong. But I'm not saying she never did anything. He told me that she took him on all type of judge shows, um, judge hatchet, all that. Like, you know, for the, for the wild teens, like when the teens are not doing they're disrespectful and they too much so she sent them to the show they had to go back twice and he still didn't get it right so when she was completely gone you know she it wasn't that fight from the mother um to basically keep him from being how he is but when somebody's mind is made up just like after he went to them shows he still got in trouble when somebody's mind is made up they do whatever they want to do and so you know it was what he wanted to do. So he was going to do it. Just like in our relationship. He did whatever he wanted to do. No matter if I cried. And one time I cried and he was like, why are you crying? Like, you look, call me something. Like, call me some type of character. And after that, I stopped crying. Because I'm like, oh, you're not about to be talking about me looking funny while I'm crying. But really, I was just like, after that, I'm like, he really just don't even care. So I created this tough skin like I don't care either and then that's when all hell really broke loose because he like oh you don't care about me once you don't care about the narcissist that's when the abuse comes because they feel like oh you don't care so they don't care either they really don't care and you know he was trying to act like all nonchalant but it was breaking him in the inside because he needs that energy from me and when I wasn't giving it to him that's what caused more and more abuse, right? But this criminal record, he was never afraid of me to call the police because he was like, so what? I'll get right out. He didn't care. And I'm like, you should care because I'll have you in jail. No, you won't. You already told me that you don't call the police, which I did because growing up in LA, being from LA, don't nobody want to deal with no LAPD. You may get killed if you call the police. So I'm cool, right? So at this point, I was just praying to God, like, God, please help me, like help me in this situation. But I never was saying, you know, um, I want to leave him alone. I just kept saying, help me, not yet. So while he was still doing it, I just was like, God, give me the strength, you know, help me while I'm going through this, make sure that um, you guide me on what to do. But anyways, so it was just crazy, you know, dealing with him and his criminal record. But like, if anybody is watching this and they really want to know, like, well, what do I do if I'm dealing with a narcissist that has been to jail? Number one, you got to get away from this person. That's number one. Number two, it ain't no change in them. They have to change on their own. And even if they change, they may, because it's already all messed up, they have to start a new chapter with somebody else to be different. It's not going to work with you guys because they got history to where they can always think about, oh, you did this, you did that. You know, people need time to heal. So like, I'm sorry to say, yeah, you can do 
praying, prayer, um, healing, but it's all said and done with you guys if he's done if he's done that. You know, I'm not saying that prayer doesn't work. Prayer works. That's why I'm not in this situation now. But prayer can only work if the other person is willing to work with prayer too. So like when people, um, when you go to church and they like pray for me, you have to pray for yourself as well. Somebody could pray for you all day long, but if you're not willing to do what you need to do, it's not going to work. That's why I said, you know, get away and they'll change, but in their next relationship, because they've seen that it didn't work with you. Basically, you have to be the change that you want to see. Okay, you can't expect them to change and you're still baby them, babying them, babysitting them in this situation and expecting them to change. How? And you ain't left and you ain't gave them no reason to change. That's why you have to leave. Right. And so we're all in this together. You know, I'm still going through it. The residue. My kids, you know, that's not his kids um, have seen the abuse. They have to live with that. The little kids, they haven't seen the abuse, but they're afraid of him. When he come around, they're afraid of him. His whole aura is like they're afraid. They see how he acts, his energy when he come in, how he speaks to me, the aggressiveness. One time we was around his kids, and his kids at the time a few years ago was like one and two, or two and three, one of them. And um, I was pregnant, and he started hitting me. One of his kids fell out the chair. And I was like, yo, baby, yo, baby, yo, baby, get your baby, get your baby. Trying to get him off of me. And he still kept on doing it. But then after like 10 seconds, he stopped. And I was like, oh, thank God, you know. Because if the kids wasn't right here, he would have had no remorse like he did the last time. And he kept doing it after that. And let him tell it, oh, he only hit me once. No, I made it a big deal once. The other times, because I didn't make it a big deal or, you know, cause a big old scene or whatever you don't count that no no you still have damaged everything my house broke down doors at hotels at my place got me notices at my place but anyway we'll talk about that because i do have footage of him messing up my house yes i do i recorded his monkey ass and so you know it's just it's it's, it's a shame but 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 when you get away, things, things start to happen so much better for you. So much. I mean, it just start like blossoming like a whole nother life. So get away and don't be afraid because as intimidating as it is, do not be afraid because that's what they want you to do. Be afraid so that you can stay. And that's so sad that a narcissist intimidates you to stay instead of doing right. So, I will be dropping a few more videos after this one today, you guys, because I got a few more things to talk about along this subject. You know, I just didn't want to put everything all in one video. Um, thank you guys for going along with this journey with me. Like, thank you guys for being here. here. Thank you guys for just subscribing, supporting. Um, feel free to leave a comment Excuse me, in the messages um, below um, in the comment section. And, like, let's talk about it. You know, like, I do reply back. And like, I don't know why, like every time I talk about this, like I get anxiety, like I start sweating, I start burping because it was a real tough time in my life. And the reason why I'm talking about this is because I know someone is going through this and they don't know what to do. And it feels so good to hear somebody go through it. As sad as it sounds, it's, it, it makes you feel like, you know, you're not the only one. And you know, you wanna hear, well, what did they do? What did they go through, you know? So that's why I will be dropping dropping the devil is alive and this is my last video too i will be dropping gems dropping um solutions to problems with these narcissists um and everything everything you know god is here with us god has me speaking um i do want to start a support group so that we can like because from this time you know it's been a few years but I'm still dealing with it. That's the thing, like the healing and stuff like that. But like things have changed tremendously because I had to do these steps. I had to do this, I had to do that. Me talking in a 15 minute video is not even the pain and the, the, the trials that I went through. It was way more than this. And I'm gonna talk about it. 
and in my community that I'm making, we are going to talk about the steps, the activities, the certain things that I did, the certain things that I said. I mean, I'm going to give it all. I'm giving it all that I got because I love to help one another. I love to help, you know, people. And I just like seeing people happy. And that's all it is to it. So I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you guys. Make sure to like this. Subscribe if you haven't. And um, let's talk about it. Okay. I'll see you guys. Bye.